The question is, do flame guards actually keep you from burning your pizza when baking in a portable high temp pizza oven like this Unicota 16 right behind me? In a previous video, and I, I'll leave a link above, I tested this flame guard, and you can see that there's die cut holes on both sides of it that I really think affected its performance. The manufacturer, Craftsman House, they sent me a new one. It looks like, like this one right here. It's got no holes on it, all right? Let's give this flame guard a test drive. We'll bake some pizzas and see if it does any better than the last one. Naturally, the first thing to do is to slide the guard in here and the long piece goes in the back. Just like that, there we go. Now we just need to kick it on. There we go. All right, some of you guys are probably thinking, well, why don't I just add that flame guard right before I start baking? Honestly, that might help with the first pizza, but the guard's just gonna get hot in a matter of minutes, and it doesn't really matter after that, right? So why not drop it in during the preheat, avoid the risk of burning the crap out of your hand, because this oven, honestly, is just super hot. Let everything heat up together, that way you have a nice, consistent environment in the oven from your first bake to your last bake. Now, if you feel differently, comment below and tell me what you think. All right, let's do a quick temp check. All right, this stone is at 825, 830 degrees Fahrenheit, just like in the first video. Stone, flame guard, those are ready to go. Let's bake a pizza and test this puppy out. What do you say? All right, we're adding a little bench flour to the table here. I'm gonna do this pretty quick. I'll spare you the details. You guys have seen me make a million pizzas on my channel, so there we go. Just pushing out from the center. Flip it over, do the same thing. With the knuckles, letting gravity do most of the work. <laughs> you guys have heard me say that a million times too. Cool. Some pizza sauce, again, this is some cooked sauce. I don't have fresh sauce made, this is just sort of leftover, so I'm using what I have. And I need a bigger spoon so I can start from the center and just sort of work my way out. There we go. Okay. Some mozzarella. Nice even coverage here. Beautiful. A little bit of parm to finish. Perfect. Where's my peel? Get that up. Tidy up the shape a little bit. There we go, we're ready to fire it. I'm gonna bump the heat down just like I did in the last video. Try to keep everything the same. Oh, and by the way, I'm timing this, so we'll see how long the pizza actually takes to bake. Yeah, catching quite a bit of color still, gotta say. All right, we're good. How's that look to you guys? All right, there you go. Let's take a quick look at the bottom. Looks pretty evenly cooked, nice. You can see right here that I did catch some color and for what it's worth, this took two minutes and nine seconds to bake. You know what, let me bake the second pizza without the flame guard then we can compare the two side by side before I cut anything up. Sound good? Right, here we go. Kick that heat down a little bit. And quick spin. There you go. The crust around the edge on this pizza did not rise nearly as well as the first one. Maybe I just stretched it a little too much. I don't know. All right, there you go. Definitely not round, but still looked pretty good nonetheless. Underneath, evenly cooked just like the first one. Oh yeah, and here's the time. Two minutes and six seconds, so pretty much the same as the first pizza. I definitely didn't get as good of a rise on the outer crust. I guess I stretched that out a little too thin. But let me get the first pizza. 
There we go. All right, here's a comparison shot. This is the first pizza with the guard. And this is the second pizza with no guard. And just like the first video, I don't see a huge difference between these pizza. Now, this isn't a perfect test. There are variables here, okay? Um, I have one dough left, and I'm gonna do what I said I didn't think mattered early in the video. The flame guard's cooled down now. I'm gonna pop it back in the oven right before I fire the pizza, and let's see if that helps at all, okay? All right, I'm just gonna pop this off for a second. I'm gonna get this in here and positioned properly. Not easy when the oven's hot. Let's use this. There, that's good. Oven goes back on. Here we go, firing the pizza. Turn it down. Man, my dough seems to be sticking to the peel a little bit today. Probably because it's misting out here. Oh yeah, I can already tell there's a, there's a difference on this pizza. Let's see. Yeah, big time. All right, coming out. There you go. Quick look at the bottom, much darker, actually a little overcooked on the bottom over there. This crust looks pretty similar, um, maybe a little bit more evenly brown all the way around, but that pizza took three minutes and one second to cook. So almost an entire minute longer. So there you go. Let's put all three pizzas side by side. We'll do it from, do it from first, second, third. All right, in order of bake, this is the first one with the flame guard added during the preheat. Second one is no flame guard whatsoever. Third one is the flame guard that was added after the preheat or right before the pizza went in. <laughs> All right, well, that did something different, right? It extended the bake time. I did not burn my outer crust, but I ended up overcooking the base a little bit. Now, you have seen me cook with that flame guard a few different ways. I'm gonna put the ball squarely in your court. You guys can decide whether you think a flame guard will help you make better pizza. I wanna thank Craftsman House for sending me that second prototype. I appreciate it, it was fun to test out and, and play around with. Um, if you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and I will catch you next time. Thanks.